Hello, Hi. hello. Hello, hello. Welcome to another episode, episode five, I believe, of our Spiral Up Living podcast. I'm Trish Maracqua, and I am with Joanna Mercados Peters, and we are uh, sharing a beverage and hoping that you also get your favorite favorite uh, tea or wine or water or coffee and come and join us for a little discussion. Hello guys, welcome, cheers three. so happy to be here with you today and so happy to share with our amazing community the topic that we're going to be talking about today and is how all these things from the outside are being changing and impacting our inside and and how we are doing so I actually have a couple of questions for you guys how many of you in the last two weeks felt fear of what is coming up next <coughs> then how many of you actually feel anxiety and stress I did absolutely and then Maybe you are on the group of people that don't think that this is as serious as the media is putting it on, but does anybody also even is scared or fearful about their parents and grandparents and the old people that you love and know? I know that I have a couple of dear friends that are in their 70s, 80s that I am concerned about. Um, and if and, any of that... Even, go ahead. Even Joanna... I think a big message now that you you already mentioned, this is changing daily, what we are always dealing with. Mm -hmm. um, but, but remember, this is going far beyond um, the elderly communities, that we all should be taking this very seriously and, um, and really taking care of ourselves and our families and Hopefully we can give you a few uh, tips and on what we're doing and maybe it will help you. I just also wanted to say that I am not on a beach. This is uh, the virtual background on my Zoom. Uh, I am in self-isolation after having just come back from California. So I'm here in my house with my four cats and my dog Murphy and, uh, and it's just me. And Joanna, where are you? Well, before I share where I am, I actually want to share with everybody that I love the background from Trich because that gave me actually really hope that soon, very soon, I promise you guys, very soon, everything is going to go back to normal and we're going to be able to go back and enjoy the things that we love. And the ocean and the beach are some of the things that I enjoy the most. So actually having the podcast today, seeing that beautiful view, just make my heart feel of joy. And I am in Ohio. I am on self-quarantine. If some of you have been following our social media, you know that I started getting some symptoms of coronavirus last Thursday. So I had to lock myself on my bedroom away from my family for 14 days. So today is day eight of the 14. And that's what I've been doing here. Well, you look amazing still. Thank you. Know. you. And Thank you so uh, yeah, Joanna and I actually this time last year were on a beach like this, uh, doing one of our speaking courses in the Dominican. So it's only fitting that you look at a beach as opposed to my not quite so clean office. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And today we want to share with you, we've been talking, both of us, and seeing our friends and co workers. And one of the trends that I've been seeing is how this is impacting our professional life and our career. So Trish, share a little bit of where you are and what is the situation and how things are going on for you. Well, like m maybe many people out there, it has been a roller coaster of changes to my business and also um the emotions that go along with that the the uncertainty the fear the uncertainty the what if what if those go goes on for a long time how am i going to handle it uh, one of my businesses besides the life coaching is i have a riding stable so we teach people how to ride horses we do training uh, 
Uh, we have 50 or 50, 50 horses on the place. I have three full-time staff, six uh, part-time or three part-time staff, and then several other people that work. Um, so we've been mandated to actually shut our doors to the public. So that means even the owners of the horses right now cannot come and see them. And uh, so it's a huge responsibility to my, because I'm here, not at my barn. I'm here and they are down there really doing the most exemplary job of taking care of all of those animals. It's a huge amount of work. And so for sure our clients uh, can rest assured that everything is being done. But I sit up here going, okay, our income is cut. How am I going to pay these people? I'm responsible for them, their families, their livelihood. And that uh, being, I call it being the responsible one has really taken a toll on me this week. Um, I had a little breakdown this morning, had a little cry. And uh, yeah, I don't necessarily feel totally better, but you know, I just got it one minute at a time and uh, I can't obsess about the what ifs, but I definitely want to be looking at putting a contingency plan in place um, for this going on long-term. So we're looking at ways to support our clients, to connect them with their horses, because horses are so healing. They're really magical. So it's been really difficult for people to not be able to come out when it's high stress and a lot of fear and a lot of uncertainty. The horses would help with that, but they can't. So we're doing a lot of virtual work. And once I get out of here, I'm gonna be doing some Facebook Lives with the horses and some FaceTimes with the horses. And I'll share that with everybody so that they can meet and greet them and really be connected with how magical they are. Um, but from a business standpoint, yeah, scary as, I won't finish the sentence, dot, dot, dot. So, and for all of you that are watching us or are probably hearing us on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or any of the other platforms that we are available right now is, if you are an entrepreneur and you are facing the challenges that uh, Trish is facing, the first advice that we have for you is don't fight the feelings. It is okay. These are brand new territories for all of us. It is okay to be a little scared. It is okay to be fearful. It's okay to be stressful. What I will invite you to do is actually feel the feeling instead of trying to push it out because if you try to push it out and bottle it up, what is going to happen is it's going to explode even stronger eventually. So the first, the first point here that I will invite all of you that are entrepreneurs and that have people uh, under your charge is allow yourself to feel. And the issue is not feeling. The issue is letting yourself run with that emotion for long periods of time. So as we were talking about the horses, is emotions are like horses. And we learned this from our mutual mentor, Eric Ennis. Emotions are like horses. They are horses that are very nice to ride and very gentle and very kind. And those horses are equivalent to the good emotions like joy and happiness and playfulness. And they are horses that are wild. And then if you jump on them, they just take off and take you whatever they want because they are the boss. The, the, the call here is try, your, try that your emotions are not like those wild horses that take you over. And then if you're feeling a stress or anxiety or a scarcity um, that you can control those emotions and, and feel them to, to move forward. And to be able to um, allow the thoughts to come, <clears throat> but then make the choice to change them because we do have a choice. And if you're struggling, because we know a lot of people are struggling with depression at this time, and, and I know that I'm here by myself, so I make sure that I reach out and do a, a call or a voice message or a Zoom call or a WhatsApp. I call Joanna all the time and wake her up sometimes from a nap, um, just to touch base when, when I'm 
not able to really switch what I'm thinking about into a more positive way. I just connect with someone. If I can't find anyone, then I connect with some positive um, book or uh, YouTube video or something that is going to help just change things around in my in my brain. And that with that one, one big, and this is part of my, my workshop, one of my workshops that I have is the magic of asking for help. And is now more than ever, please listening to me, now more than ever is the time to ask for help and take away that mentality that I need to be the superhero that handled everything by myself and I need to be the strong one and I need to be the one that had everything figured out. This is not the time to walk on those pants. This is the time to say, hey, I'm dealing with this. I'm struggling with this. I'm challenged with this. I'm having a very difficult time with this. Let's brainstorm. Let's gonna talk about it. Always remember that there is people around you willing to help. This is, this is for everybody. If you're a mom and you are, your kids and your spouse is driving you crazy 24 seven with you in the same house. If you're a sole entrepreneur, if you are an entrepreneur with employees, if you are uh, an employee of a company, this is a time to reach out and ask for help and ask people to help you. And, and help you to move to the other side. Absolutely. And then, and to take time for yourself. And uh, it's really like, what do you like to do that maybe you don't have time to do? Um, is it, I have a guitar gathering dust in my bedroom so, hey, maybe I'll play guitar on one of the podcasts. Mm, that'd be fun. Um, and what about Joanna picking up a book? Like, what do you think? Yeah, I think that that's a phenomenal idea. The, one, of the, one of the suggestions that we have when you are starting to feel that stress and that anxiety is what I would suggest you, I love that idea of the, of the book, is maybe go back to your bookcase to your library and pick your three favorite books ever that you know that are going to be nourishing your soul. And just place them randomly in the house. Place one in the living room, one in the kitchen, one in the bedroom. And then next time that you start feeling those, that anxiety and that stress, just stop and go and read 10 pages of the book. Just sit down and enjoy 10 pages of the book and See if that doesn't make you feel much better after you finish reading those, those 10 pages. A nice bubble bath with some candles, uh, some nice smelling uh, essential oils, diffusing. Um, those are the kind of things that help me. Mm -hmm. And talking, talking a little bit more about the entrepreneur in you. Um, the client, the client, from the client perspective and also from the employee's perspective. One of the things that Trisha and I were talking about is there is a lot of people having different opinions that Trisha is an entrepreneur with employees and me as an entrepreneur that was also a leadership coach for multinationals and 1,500 companies around the world is in times of crisis, one of the things that the extraordinary leaders do is they involve their team. So don't think that you need to figure out this all by yourself. Just gather your team. What we want to tell you is don't be freaking out when you talk with your team. You need to handle your own emotions first. And then after you are calm and stable, you can just reach out to them and say, hey, this is the situation. I would love to brainstorm with you guys what ideas you have, what we can do differently to make sure that we take care of our priorities that are our well-being, the well-being of our employees, the well-being of our clients, and then the well-being of the business. And every time, it doesn't matter, I work in 15 countries in four continents. Every time that we apply that strategy, we were amazed with the response and the ideas and the empowering process that came out of the team and the employees feeling that they were part of the solution. 
Yeah, I actually did a meeting yesterday and I called, I can't see them face to face, so it was on the phone. And the very first thing I did was start talking about everything that I was thinking. And then I just thought, okay, Trish, slow down. And I started again and I just checked in with everyone and to see how they were feeling and how it was affecting their lives <coughs> and the partners <coughs> that they are with. How are, are their jobs affected? Just to get a conversation going, like I hadn't really done that yet. I didn't really know where they stood. So that was very special for me that we were able to share that. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm. And, um, and then I, I tend to keep a lot of stuff in my head. I get all these great ideas and they swirl around in my head. And then sometimes I get a little annoyed because they're not, kind of on the same page okay but seriously I never communicated with them what I was truly thinking so it, we did a brainstorming how are we going to connect with the clients more how are we going to keep um, the income coming in how are we going to keep caring for our horses how are they going to make sure to take care of themselves so they can keep coming to work and uh, the the difference between how I was feeling and what I thought was happening was night and day just after that conversation. They were engaged with my thoughts on doing videos and pictures that we could send to the clients so that they could be connected with their horses. And then uh, Sarah had the brilliant idea to actually do an interview with our veterinarian who was at the barn so that he could, from his standpoint, talk to them as the professional, as the veterinarian who looks after their horses, what he felt was important at the time for the horses. And that was so special and so amazing. That's, and that is the case all the time. So for you entrepreneurs that, with your, that are maybe stressed about your employees, we will just invite you to talk with them and, and make them part of the solution and make them part of what ideas they can offer and create to to go through this process and then if you are a sole entrepreneur or even if you're an entrepreneur with employees but ne then the next part is your clients so how you deal with your clients if your clients are not getting the 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 services that you are offering or not buy the products the other one is reach out to your clients as well and then just be honest and transparent saying hey this is the situation i would love to see ways that I can serve you and then we can still have a relationship and there's going to be a couple of things that Trisha and I were talking about the first one is that I've been seeing a lot especially in Australia of business owners saying hey reaching out to the public and say if your salary is not impacted by this situation so that means if you are still receiving your normal salary we will invite you to keep paying as normal and keep investing as normal on the services that you consume every month because if your salary is coming in normal by now that that is a good invitation and then for the people that is being impacted by salary is go and find solutions with them maybe defer the payments a couple of months maybe give them a different rate just go into a problem solving mentality with your clients to made the first priority that is keep the relationship going and keep serving and helping them to go to the next level. Absolutely. Um, it's really, uh, it's been a creative time. How else can you serve your, your uh, clients when maybe the new normal or the face-to-face -face isn't available anymore? Um, I met with 130 and more equestrian coaches from across Canada this week, the past two weeks, and the ideas that people are coming up with and sharing, um, it's amazing. And I've always said we need to do things online, and well, guess what? Here's our opportunity to do it. And the networking with people within your industry to help maybe come up with some of those creative ideas. People thought of stuff that I never would have thought of, and I'd already put in place a lot of things that they were able to learn about. And then you can inspire each other 
as well to keep going. So even as solopreneurs and entrepreneurs, just find people in your same industry that you can share ideas with and, and collaborate, I guess is my word. Yeah. And then if you are not an entrepreneur yet, this and you are an employee, but you're being impacted by this situation and either get your income reduced or maybe you're being laid off or lose your job, this is also a great opportunity to tune in into your passions and the things that you are very good at and start offering that and get service, offer that service to people online. Like if you play the guitar, teach classes. If you are very good cooker, cook, and you are a chef and you love cooking, offer healthy uh, cooking classes. There is so many ways that you can do it um, to, to explore on serving others and finding ways to, to leave this situation stronger that we come in. But with that, I was also thinking on three, what are some, because we as leaders and we as females especially usually take a lot of weight into our shoulders. So how we can on these times being able to, what are the tools that you use to stay connected and, and, and reduce the stress and, and feel good in a daily basis even when we don't know what is going to happen tomorrow? I think one of the biggest things for me is to remember to breathe. I just find that, I mean, we breathe, we breathe automatically, but to actually be mindful about the way that I'm breathing. And I use a five, five, five method as one of them, which is to breathe in for the count of five, hold it for five, release it for five, and then count for five and then start again. And by doing that then five times, um, it just helps bring me back into the present moment and into myself. And it seems to alleviate a lot of the stress and a lot of the tightness within my body. And it reprograms my brain. I don't know how, like it just makes everything clearer in that moment. What about you? Well, I love breathing too. And actually we were talking about that last episode last week about one of the 10 tips to survive any crisis was uh, breathing and there is so many different ones I like the 555 that is the one that we use as part of the wealthy challenge um, to rewire our brain around food the other one that I really enjoy is inhale on the count of four and then exhale on the count of six or eight so making the exhalation longer, sometimes twice as long as the inhalation, because actually the part of the breathing that calm our nervous system and activate our parasympathetic system is the exhale. That is the part that sends the signal to the reptile brain that we are safe and that we are peaceful and that everything is okay. So I really enjoyed that one. Um, one, one thing that, that I will suggest as well is talking a little bit about routines like i know that you have a strong routine and i will ask you to share with the with the community your routine i have a routine too i have a routine in the morning and i have a routine in the evening and even if you're not a routine person i was actually coaching a, a girl today and we were talking about routines and she was like nah i don't like routines i create them and then i never follow them because i just <laughs> i just cannot concentrate and that is okay. Maybe you are not a very strict routine person, but at least have, a, have some constant, constancy? No. Consistency. Consistency, thank you. Yeah, have some welcome. consistency in your days. Why? Like if, even if you cannot plan your routine hour by hour or minute by minute, if you have just general rules and hey, in the mornings, I'm going to dedicate to my body, to exercise, to meditate, to read, to go outside. And then in the afternoons, I'm going to be working on my business, do homeschool with the kids. And if you start doing the same constant things every day, that is going to take a lot of pressure from your brain because your brain 
the worst thing that happened to your brain is the is the uncertainty is not not knowing what is going on and right now we are all over or sent uncertainty. We don't know. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. We don't know what is going to happen tonight. So our brains are already overloaded and in like almost like ready to, to react with that uncertainty. So if we can put some certainty into our daily activities, that will help our brain to balance that. But if in top of the outside uncertainty, we also have a complete chaotic days and every day is completely different, then we are actually putting more pressure in our brain that, that we don't need, we don't need right now. So what, what are one of your favorite routine uh, steps or one, what are some of your treasure routines that, that you do every day, Trish? Well, I like to get up early. I'm an early bird. Um, usually it's five, but I'm actually giving myself a little leeway these days and it's more like six. And uh, then I get up and I get myself organized and I like to do a workout routine and then I meditate and then I either read a book or learn something or journal. So I do that in like a 20-20-20 rule. And, um, and the reason I do it is one for the uncertainty, like to bring order to my life, but the other way is for productivity. So by doing that routine, it sets me up for the day for success. If I don't do it, then my day would look like this. I would get up, I'd have something to drink, my cats and my dog would want to be fed, but no, I would sit down and I would check my emails first. And then there's going to be these emails that have to be answered right away. Oh, and then I should get up and, uh, oh, maybe I should check Facebook because maybe there's a message there. Or maybe I should check and see what Joanna has sent me because she gets up earlier than me. And so then it becomes a chaotic day because I'm not really focusing in on the things that I need to be doing, the high yielding activities to move my business forward even in these times. And that's super easy to do because we are facing unknown and uncertainty. Like, what's going to happen to my business? I don't know. I can still be connecting with people. I'm a life coach. I can still be reaching out to, to people who are, have reached out to me. I can be reaching out to past clients to see how they're doing. There's a lot that I can be doing to contribute to my business. And if I just structure that first hour to my day, it's amazing. And if I don't, I, it's like 11 o'clock. The cats haven't been fed. The dog hasn't been fed. I missed yoga with Joanna. And, you know, and then I feel bad because it's like, Trish, look, you wasted all the day. And then I start beating myself up. So anyway, that's the routine I use. And that's why I use it. Ah, that is a, a good routine in the morning. The other routine that I have in the evening is I go to bed and I read for at least 20 minutes before going to bed, and then I meditate in bed to fall asleep. So those are a morning and evening routines that you can try, and that for sure will calm down. Another thing before we finish, we are getting close to a wrap up, but one other thing that I, that I learned from Trish, and I think that is a phenomenal idea, is um, how you use YouTube and TED Talks. Talk, about, talk, talk to us about that. Well, Joanna and I are both professional speakers, so we were challenged in our speaking group to watch TED Talks, not just to learn things, but to actually study how speakers speak, how they um, give their message out, how they craft their speeches. So it's fascinating to me, instead of maybe putting on a program, I just love to just sit for that 20 minutes, put something on, and... Uh, Sometimes I just let the information just watch over me. And sometimes I'm there with a little bit of a pen and paper and just kind of using it as a bit of a study routine. Yeah. And I do watch some Netflix. I do have my favorite bin shows. Um, but I keep that for the day when I'm going to really just unplug, let down, not really have a do anything. Then I'll make use of of kind of my favorite Netflix shows. And then I, I love the idea of the tech talks because talking about anxiety and stress, that is another one that everybody can use right now. And is 
if you are starting to feel stress or anxiety or fearful about what is going on, open your phone, open your computer and watch a 20 minute TED talk. The brilliant about TED talk is that there are 20 minutes, so you're not going to be hooked for three hours with the same one. And Trish, why we don't do this? Why we don't just post in our community our favorite TED talks? Then we're going to put a title, favorite TED Talks, and in the comments, we are going to be pasting the links of both of our favorite talks. And then if you want to join us, please go to our Facebook page and share your favorite TED Talk as well. That way we all can have that resource there to go into and watch favorite, our favorite TED Talks and either to learn just of the, from the knowledge or if you are a leader, a manager, three people, if you have kids, if you're a public speaker, a professional speaker, use it also as a way to improve your communication skills now that probably you are not being able to practice talking to others because you are by yourself at home. Absolutely. And, uh, and you can use that nice little YouTube device to help yourself unplug, like I'm going to do to re- connect with my computer or my computer, my guitar. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Get a little lesson. Yeah. Well, we are getting close to, to the end of the episode. This was an episode more about from the leadership and the business perspective, what we can do. Stay tuned. Next week, we're going to be talking about our health and how we can make sure that our body physically mentally and emotionally is as healthy as possible that our immune system is up in the rocks in the sky so no matter what is happening around us we are ready to take action and then we stay healthy and we keep our family healthy absolutely so thank you everyone for tuning in it's always a pleasure to come together and uh, a little cheers for our our healthy green drinks and uh, cheers to whatever you're going to be uh, having a beverage while you watch us and thank you Joanna again for a great episode and just a tip if you are wondering lift, lift your, your glass a little bit if you are wondering what these green things are stay tuned because next week we are going to be talking about them their magic that they do and also how you can make your own too so cheers Cheers. I love you, Trish. Thank you so much for another amazing episode. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.